football game. So just to we have that dx is equal to f dx, or that's equal to i plus red u transpose dx. All right. So just remember also we had that little x, right, just using the vector math from our drawing, little x is equal to big X plus u of x, right? Or in component form, xi is equal to big xi plus ui So if we take the partial derivative of this equation with respect to big XJ, we have that equation. What's this guy? Delta IJ, right? What's this guy? I mean, it's this guy, right? Which is equal to F as we defined it. So evidently f, if we look at the other side of the equation, is also equal to partial little x partial fj. So it's another equation we might use later. And this equation I don't love because if you don't if you don't remember that little x is functionally dependent on big x, you might think that you're taking the partial derivative of a um, independent variable with respect to an independent variable, which doesn't make sense, right? So keep in mind that little x is a function of big X one, two, three. Okay, so that's kinematics, really. Now we want to define um, a strain measure or some strain measure. Remember when we talked about 1D strain, there's an infinite number of strains, right? Because what we reference it by can, is arbitrary. We can choose it. Remember, I think I made the point that you could, you could reference by the length of that wall, right? And normally we say, change in length over original length, or change in length over final length. So the way in this finite deformation or in this continuum theory that I've been presenting, we're going to define strain as the measure that gives the change in the squared length of dx, okay, big D big X, right? the change in the squared length of the, ori of the original X, okay? And so we might call that ds. Remember, remember we had the configurations in the very first drawing. I said we, we have a little line segment ds, and we want to track how it becomes ds. Right? So ds, OK, 
okay? The little s is the magnitude or the length of the vector d little x, right? So it's the magnitude of dx, right? Length. Which, of course, the magnitude of a vector is what? Sum the, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, right? So my vector dx has component dx1. If I square that, dx2 squared plus dx3 squared. The square root of all that is the magnitude, right? Right? Shake your head. Yes. The, the, the magnitude of a vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Right? Yes. Everyone knows that. Right? Hope so. Okay. I don't like to deal with this. I don't want to carry this square root sign around with me. Right? So I'm going to square both sides of the equation. And that gets rid of that square root sign. So then ds squared is just the sum of the squares of the components. And just notice that in vector, if I write out the actual vectors, that I can get the sum of the squares, or the, the sum of the squares of the components by this vector operation, right? Everybody recognize, if I multiply that vector by that vector, then I get the sum of the squares of the components, all right? So what is this vector operation? I may, I may have not said explicitly, but any time I write a vector, any time I, I write something with an arrow over it, right, like this, it's implicit that it's a column vector, okay? So this guy is clearly d little x, right? So what's that? d x transpose. And likewise, d big S squared is equal to d big X transpose d big X. Right. So we said we're going to define the strain as the change in squared length of line segment. Right. So ds d little s is in our final configuration or current current configuration. D big X, D big S squared is in the reference configuration. And so then let's write out. We have that's D little X transpose DX minus D big X transpose D big X. Everybody know why I got that? So I just plug this in here and this in there to get that. Okay? But we also have this equation, which would, if we plug that in, the right hand side would all be in terms of d big X, right? So let's do that. I'm going to plug in that equation. So I have dx transpose is f d big X transpose f d big X minus d big X 
transpose v x. Now, if you have a, a matrix vector quant product that's the product is transposed, how do I, do you know what that's equal to? Yeah, it's, it's, it's equivalent to saying I can, I can distribute the transpose and, slip, and flip the order. So I'm going to distribute the transpose and flip the order. So I have dx transpose f transpose f dx minus, OK? And I'm just going to, over here, I'm going to write dx transpose times i, the identity matrix, right, times dx. And just the i doesn't do anything, right? A vector times the identity matrix is the vector. But what that allows me to do is now you, you should see that I can factor out the dx transpose and the dx. So I have dx transpose f t f minus i dx. Right. And we're going to define this thing. We're going to define it as 2e, where e is a Lagrangian strain. Okay? So just so I don't have one, just so I don't have one new page with one equation on it, I'll just write it over here. E, which is the Lagrangian strain, is equal to one half f t f minus i. Okay. That is called the Lagrangian strain. It's also known as the green St. Venant strain, named after the, I think, green in 1841 and St. Venant in, in 1844 or something independently derived this strain measure. Now, what may not be clear yet, and it will be in the next lecture, is where the two came from. Right? So we just Remember, these things, strains are just convenience definitions for us, right? They're, they're referenced to something, right? And li just like I said, we can reference it to that wall, right? Well, what we're really doing here is referencing it to the original length, and that's apparent because we pulled everything back to the reference configuration. We used, you know, we substituted in for little dx. We'll see next time that we could also solve this equation. We can also solve this equation for big dx, right? So if we solve this equation for big dx, we have f inverse little dx equals to big dx. And then if we make that same substitution into the ds squared minus ds squared, everything on the right-hand side will be in terms of little dx's, and we have another definition for strain, okay? So in the green strain, we're referencing it back to the reference configuration as apparent by using all big dx's. Remember, big, big letters are in the reference configuration, right? By a fact, and then dividing by a factor of two. So just like I said, we can reference our you know, deformation of that wall. Well, here what we're doing is referencing it to the current length with a factor of two. And we'll see why that factor of two comes into play in the next lecture. Why? It has to do with a consistency with a linearized strain, a geometric definition of strain. Okay, so so far everything was sort of mathematical, but I mean, really, all of today's lecture was geared towards coming up with this guy, the Lagrange strain.
Next time we'll talk about the Eulerian strain and explain where that factor of two comes from. Okay?